Anyway, I did bring some cars down. Uh, some of you were up looking at them. I, you can see the different ways that you can weather. Um, I took a lot of pictures, you know, 20, 25 years ago, well, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, when I started doing the, the roofs, I was standing, everybody else was getting a roster shot, and I was looking for a high place to shoot down, like an overpass. This was before 2001, so now if you do that, you're a terrorist. Um, and I definitely wouldn't wear the I Heart ISIS t-shirt either. That's probably a bad idea. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you get near the railroad tracks anymore, unfortunately. You're, you're, unless you're going to graffiti a car, then you got all night. So um, Anyway, use photos if possible. Uh, at the end of this uh, paper, I've got some online resources. Uh, fallenflags.com or whatever, uh, RR Picture Archives, railpictures.net. And then if you go to railserve.com, uh, they're like a clearinghouse for everything railroad related, whether prototype or modeling. And they have a lot of sites on there. Another good place would be um, your historical society, probably has a lot of pictures, or just um, look into your favorite railroad. I know SP's got a bunch of sites on their stuff. Most of them, though, are roster shots. You're not going to get a lot of roof shots if that's what you're looking for. But um, on Fallen Flags, I usually look to see where the picture was taken and who took it because that guy is usually kind of downward shot on something. So I always look for those. The other one is if you're going to be you know, weathering something, look what when... What date are you looking for on that? You can get on these, and a lot of them have the date the picture was taken. And then you can get an idea what that car looked like at that time frame instead of you're doing a, you know, you want to weather a car from 1995 and you've got a picture of it today. Well, it's very different than what it looked like 20 years ago. Um, the other thing with most of these cars, particularly the four, uh, 50 foot double doors and whatnot, they're reaching the end of their service life. They won't be around too much longer. Uh, they're all going to the big TTX boxes and whatnot. Uh, the 50-footers are all pretty close to 40 years old. I know all the SP ones are just about gone. I think 79 was the last big set of double doors, wasn't it? So, I mean, another two years, those cars will be out of interchange service. And you don't see too many of them now anyway. Used to be solid trains of them. And now I, I did see one in a train the other day, so that was kind of cool. The newer cars, the TTX boxes, and the <coughs> all your newer box cars. I was up in Dunsmuir a while back, you know, about a month ago. And of course, I'm standing up high so I can get pictures of the roofs of these cars. That was a waste of <laughs> time. These newer box cars, I don't know what they did to them, but there's like no rust at all on them. And some of them are 15 years old. I remember when they first came out, those TTX F boxes. There's no rust on those. There might be a little on the sides, but there's none on the roofs. Uh, and they're just a light grayish color. So um, in addition to the paint schemes not being as much fun, the weathering's not as much fun either. Um, so anyway, like I say, use photos if you can. Uh, try not to go by memory. Uh, I've done that, and then when I looked at what I did and what I wanted, it was a pretty good weathering job, but it was nothing like what I thought, because you always think it's bigger and better than it was, and it just usually isn't. So, And again, a lot of times, Less is more. You don't have to weather the heck out of these things. Just a little bit for somebody to see that, oh, yeah, that thing's been used, but not beaten and put away and whatnot. Okay, so we're going to start. What we want to do is dull coat the entire car, engine, what have you. Uh, we're talking about railroad cars today. Now, I talked about, let's say you have a, a box car that doesn't have a silver roof. This is where you want to use this. It's... It's pretty pliable. You can cut off, take off what you want, and just lay it right on here. Give it a little bit of overlap from where you're at because there's a little lip in here, and you can use your fingerprint or fingernail to get it down in there. Okay, just like that, and you can bring that off of there a little bit. And like I say, this make sure it, it seals because if it comes up a little bit, you're going to get paint down inside of there. And you can do this the whole way around the car. If you don't have fingernails, you can use the back, the back side 
of an X-Acto knife gently. You can use a toothpick just to get it in there. Now I just accidentally ripped that and I didn't mean to. It was probably from using the X-Acto knife. Um, but just do it gently in there and, you, and then just wrap it around as needed. Now at this point you've used that much of this very expensive tape. At this point you can use whatever other tape you want to use. I usually use like a, a painter's tape and then cover it with um, uh, paper, uh, paper towels or newspaper so that when I spray it I'm just spraying the top. And always fill in in here too because these doors you might have taped this but if you got paint coming through here it's going to come up underneath and get on around the door and you're going to wonder how that happened. That's how it happened. So just grab a piece of paper wad it up or, or uh, one of these just wad it up and stick it in there and it, you don't have to tape it in but just make it sure it's you know covering the doors so you don't get any of that in there. Okay so that's what you want to do and then you'll have a roof that looks like that. This ha actually came out like that. I did dull coat this earlier so you don't uh, I'm not going to run out and dull coat it right now but what I am going to do and this alone is another way that you can make the car look better without doing a whole lot to it is where is my when you grab a bottle of paint, make sure it's the one you want. This is gray, it's camouflage gray, it's enamel. <laughs> so if you smell a little enamel, that's what it is. Unfortunately, I did not bring another gray paint. Uh, so we're going to have to use our imagination and say that I, I did this. Uh, it's the same process that I'm going to use to do the car, uh, except you do a little bit more of the gray, like I say. just get a, like a, a mottled, M-O-T-T-L-E-D, uh, look to it. It doesn't want to be all gray, but just kind of that wavy look to it. Um, so just pretend. We're going to go on to our other colors. And for that, for metal roofs such as this, I'm going to do it on this one right here. Start with your... sponge. You want to cut this in as sharp as you can. A wedge that's got a pretty sharp point on it. Okay. Doesn't have to be really straight. Doesn't have to be really fine. Um, and we're going to start with our rust color, which I do have because I just saw it. Yes, I did. I saw it. There it is. Okay. So this is Model Flex, but um, a, uh, Model Master acrylic makes a rust color. Any, any sort of light brown color is going to be a rust color. You can also use an orange if there's a light orange. And I'm going to grab some paint here with a brush, a cheap brush. There we go. Don't be dry. Thank you. And this is pretty dry. Okay, what you want to do is, is dab this in there gently, like this. Get a little bit of color on the end of this. And then figure out where you want this. So I'm going to go on the ribs if I can. I'm just going to touch the ribs with it. Okay, now I got a little bit. You want a little bit of, you want it dry, but you, you want to be able to at least pick up some paint. So get yourself some paint on there. And then we're going to go with the, right on the ribs. Like that. And there you can kind of see. It doesn't make a full coverage, but it gives it that you know, kind of spotty coverage like you see in rust. And when you're doing this, you know, don't, you can't do anything wrong. 
You, you really can't. Don't don't get nervous about oh I'm I'm gonna screw this or whatever. I mean, if if you're worried about getting something on here, just put a little tape to protect the sides or what have you. Um, you'll notice I kind of hold this where I'm not holding the car itself. Kind of get my hands in here. If this had doors on it, I'd hold it like this instead of grabbing the car and get my fingers all over it. If you'll notice, the police departments, when they do fingerprints, they're using basically chalk to pick the fingerprints up. You'll pick them up real easy. You have a big fingerprint. At that point, you'll, be re you'll really want to turn this into a helicopter. And, and to do that, it depends on how you hold it. You can either hold it like this. <laughs> and it will leave a mark on the wall. Don't ask me how I know. Yelling helps, too. And what you want to really try not to do is swipe this. You want to dab it the whole time. Um, I notice here I got a little bit of a swipe on it. You'll, you'll see it when I pass around. You can fix it. So I'm not going to turn it into a helicopter. But um, just that, if you, if you, you want to dab it as much as you can uh, so that you get the the dots, so to speak, on there instead of a a, way, a line. And let me do this a little bit more here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pass that around. You can take a look at that uh, and kind of see the, the different shadings and whatnot. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more, get that a little oranger. A little, little more ruddy, a little more ruddy, a little more rusty looking, a little uh, orange to it. So we'll get that going. And, and even by the time it came around, this is dried already. Uh, usually I would go out and dull coat it, but you don't have to. Um, so we're going to go to our next uh, dark color. Uh, there's different different I'm going to go with this color it's, it's a real reddish color but you could go with a dark oxide like I say use the lighter colors first so I'm going to go with this one where's my leather and these are 59 79 cent brushes so you might get a few hairs in here just kind of keep an eye out for that And if you make a mistake, you can always get a wet Q-tip, because this is water-based paint, and clean it up. I got a little overzealous with the, with the sponge, and I got a little bit too much of the red where I didn't want it. So I can clean it up as long as you don't let it dry. But just be aware that this stuff does dry pretty quick. So, And when you're putting it on, <clears throat> at the way we are, it's already pretty dry anyway. So it's, good. it's not going to take long for it to, to harden up. Okay, that's with our second color on. You can see the difference. And if you want, I mean, if you want a, a really rusty roof, you can be a little more aggressive than I have been. I'm just trying to give you some basics and show you the different shadings. Um, you, know, you put more, a bigger area, kind of what I've done here, kind of went with the ends on it. You can go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do a slightly darker color than the one I just used to get a, you, what you're doing is trying to graduate that color to the darkest, and you always want to leave the lighter colors out to the edge. So.
Okay, so there's my fourth, co third color. It's just a touch darker than the one I used before. And you can stop whenever you want. I mean, I've seen cars that look like that. I've seen where the whole roof was that color with just a, a smidgen of dark black grayish colors. Um, like I said, up here I, I've done from really rusty to sort of rusty to just different ideas that I've seen. Okay, and this is with the a darker brown color. So it gives it the, a little more depth to it. You can see it kind of radiating out from the... Yeah, the rust, the older rust is always the darkest, and then it kind of radiates out a little bit. So that's what I'm trying to get an idea for there. Before, uh, so we're going to go on to our chalks, and, and again, you can do different colors, as dark as you want, as light as you want, as little as you want. So I'm going to, but we're going to go to. Oh, before we go on to that, I wanted to talk to you about spray, dull coat, gloss coat, and any spray can. You're going to spray these. Start over here and sweep it back and forth. Don't start on the car itself because there's a bunch of gunk in here that when it comes out, you're going to have a bunch of blobs uh, on your car and they will not come out. Uh, you can't weather those away. And that's really bad if you're doing the side and you've just done a beautiful job of painting it, decaling it, and whatnot, and then you got blobs all down the side. Then it's a helicopter. Uh, but again, you're going to do this 12 inches away thereabouts. Start over here, come back, and go back. Uh, you know, don't sweat the ozone, it'll come back. This isn't killing the ozone right now. Well, not, it is in big amounts, but. Uh, and I literally weigh my cars with ozone. I, with ozone. God, what the hell's going on? <laughs> with dull coat. I kill the ozone, I dull coat my cars. Uh, so don't, you know, I mean, you can't put too much dull coat on these. Uh, but again, be careful when you pick it up. Don't get your fingers in there and whatnot because your fingerprints are very hard to come out. Uh, I can get them out. It's not pleasant because you're going to have to almost redo the whole car, but uh, Solva Set does good if you put it on there and then gently wipe it off. You can usually get a fingerprint out of there, uh, it, but it may screw up the underlying dull coat, and then you're going to have a big, you won't have a fingerprint, but you have a funny looking splotch on your car. So. Basically, don't touch your cars with your fingers, especially if you've been eating Cheetos. The other thing with uh, testers on their cans now, the cap is the color of the paint. And they have the label for the paint on the cap. Okay, um, when I take the cap off, it goes in the garbage. And, it, and then you have a can with no label on it. And you're trying to guess what color it is. And if you got dull coat and gloss coat, you can't tell till you spray the darn things. And if you grab this and it's silver and you spray your car. Helicopter. Oh, yeah. Helicopter in words you didn't know existed. Uh, and that's happened. That has happened. So what I do is, unless you're a cap keeping guy, but even then you put the wrong cap on the wrong can, you're in trouble. They have a little label. They have a little label on the cap. And if you very gently peel that off and then put it on the can, then even if you keep the cap, you'll still know that you put the wrong cap on the right can or whatever the case. So, uh, in, but they don't, in the old days, it used to, the, the, they were color coded. I always knew that dull coat was kind of a goldish color and gloss coat was a blue color on, the, on this. And then they got away from that. So now just remember that. And so like I say, I, I, on this one I wrote gloss coat on it. And then one day I thought, well, why don't you just take the label off it as soon as you get it and put it on the can itself. So it takes a little bit of reading. But trust me, if this was, and this is silver, and I don't have the label on it, but I did write silver on it, uh, you'll save a lot of headaches that way. So just be aware of that with the, the at least the testers. Okay, now we'll move on to different chalks that we can use and also the pan pastels. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use uh, these. And you can see this; these guys had a really nice 
array of different colors that you could use. And these, I don't even know where I got these. These are really old. Um, you can try using your paintbrush on these, but it doesn't work very well. I was trying to cut out the middleman, but I couldn't. So um, there is no middleman with a pan pastel that's right there, and you can pick it up right away. But I am going to show you this just to give you an idea. I want to go with a light, rusty color, so I'm going to use this lighter orange. And all you got to do is, like I say, you've got your own little palette right there. It just stays right on there. And we're going to grab um, yeah, where did I get? Just, like, just like being at home. Can't find anything. I'm going to use one of these micro brushes to put this on because I don't want it all over the car. So you just run this through there, get a nice color on there. And then I'm just going to go down these ribs. And again, if it doesn't look right, don't worry about it because you can cover it up. Um, if you really don't like it, you can grab one of these and swipe it off. Um, it'll leave a little bit on there, but that's okay because you still want a little bit of orange or whatever color it is on there. And if you want, you could skip a color. You could skip the lighter colors if you're going for a darker color, but I always just use them all because it just seems to show up in there. You can see that even that lightest color has been covered up. It pokes its head out somewhere, and it does give it a little bit of a realistic look to it. So, Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this, short of using the wrong colors or putting graffiti on the car. That would be wrong. And I've put graffiti on one car in my entire life, and I did it with... If you're going to do graffiti, uh, I did it with gel pens. You can get those at, again, at art store gel pens. They work really good, and, you, and it almost looks like a spray can in that scale because the width of that uh, the uh, pen is just about what a spray can would look like in, in HO scale. Uh, what happened was I had done a hopper car, and something, I dropped a, some uh, solve set or something on it, and it just wiped out that one decal, and it wasn't something I could replace. And it was, it was just, it was a matter of I'd have to repaint the car type thing. And I thought, yeah, we'll give it a shot. I had some of these gel pens. So I didn't know what, quite what to put, so I wrote, Why? Great big green and blue letters. Why? Why me? And then under that with a little black one, I wrote, because I said so. Just like what my mom used to say. Why do I have to? Because I said so. That's, that's not a proper answer, but she didn't believe that. So. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the light color on it before it's been dull coated. I'm going to show my mic on. Uh, when I get done with this, I'm going to go out and dull coat it real quick. With each um, layer of chalk or weathering, or, at this point you do need to uh, seal it somehow, either with dull coat or with this um, fixative. And you'll notice I didn't misspell fixative. That's how they spell it with an F. Okay, so we're going to go on to our next color, uh, and I'm using the chalks on this one, but I'm using the pan pastels on the other roof from now on, and I'll show you the difference in these. Um, so I'm going to touch this with my big brush, gently. And it's just, it's a gradual thing, um, you know, of course, and I'll be in a hurry. It's supposed to be fun. 
until it's not. And if you are nervous about doing this on a you know, $35, $40 Intermountain boxcar or something, go to your local hobby shop and see if they've got a bargain basement bin and practice on that stuff. Um, like this car right here, what came like that, it was a dollar. So, I mean, you can find them. Swap meets are a good place. Or, uh, you know, International Rail Fair if they're not trying to rip you off for a Tyco car. Um, <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, we're going to our next color, and it's going to be a darker color. Uh, probably the dark brown here. Let's see how that works. And grab another one of these. It costs a whole dollar for however many. So I'm using a, a, a brownish color uh, to get that color from the orange back down to a darker color. This isn't the darkest brown I like. I'm probably going to highlight it with black here in a minute after this next uh, go around. So I'm going to take this brown. Try that. Not that one. Not that one. Let's go with Not that one. That's not good. That one's going to work. And with, with this, you can also either brush it on or dab it on. And I find that sometimes just dabbing it on is good because you've got from the, the roughness of the paint, uh, you'll have those little ridges in there from the, like the dull coat, you'll have that rough texture to it. And it'll kind of, in its minute little way, hold, hold that in different areas and let some of it blow away. So you're getting it in, not everywhere, but just in certain areas. So. And if you see a spot where, yeah, I don't like that, you can go back and put the color from previous on to kind of bring it out. It doesn't have to be all the same color at the same time, but you know, you'll see things and go, yeah, I, like it. I, I think this might look better, and you go back and fix it. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I'm going to darken this up a little bit with some black. Uh, actually mixing it with a little brown, to, so it's not black black, but it's a nice dark color. And we're going to grab this up with this. Yeah, that's good. You see how it's darkened? Mm -hmm. Again, you got some more variations in the color, but it's darkened it down. It's not quite as bright. Okay, this one I've just used chalk uh, from here to there. Uh, the silver part I just used black chalk on to tone it down. So another way you can do it if you don't do the gray. And then uh, that center section is just chalk. And there's that.
And I'm going to go out and dull coat these. I wanted to show these guys one more real quick thing. I finished it off by just using black all over it to tone that down like I did on this one. So it'll look a little bit different when we come back. OK, uh, that's a quick basic idea of how I do the roofs on these. Depending on what you want on your car, that's, that's how you do it. You just graduate to however you want it done. I just did a real quick just on the ribs, and then at the end, I, I kind of weathered the roof with a, a lot of the black to, to uh, tone it down. If you use that, unfortunately, I didn't have the gray paint, but if you use that gray paint, just that alone really makes it look uh, oxidized and really gives it a good uh, flavor. And then if you just use a little black on there, it really picks up those colors. So that's the roof. We're going to move on to uh, the car sides. 